Okay guys, today's tutorial is my version of the Disney's Magic Mirror from Snow White. So we just recently got back from Disney World in Orlando and while we were there we saw the Magic Mirror on the wall and we just knew we had to recreate it. So Jack, who is my model, also owns Gorilla Props and makes a lot of props for my channel. He made this ornate mirror frame which is absolutely beautiful and I think I'm actually going to put it on my studio wall. So this is Jack, owner of Gorilla Props, also Tommy's brother. And to start off, we're going to apply some Pro Shield to his face. I say we because I'm going to dispense it and he's going to apply it. So as you can see, it comes out like a mousse and you just simply apply it to your skin. This is ideal to apply when you're working with sort of extreme products like special effects, but I also use it before applying cream based products because I do find it tends to come off a little bit easier. I'm now taking some FX wax to flatten Jack's eyebrows. We need them to be flat and sealed so that we can paint over them. If you don't have glue, you can use a child's non-toxic Pritt stick. It will work in the same way. So I've brushed the hairs up in the direction that they naturally grow and then I've used the wax to flatten them in that same direction. I'm now going to take some sealer by Krylon and this is going to seal the wax. Doing this means we can then paint over it because it's no longer tacky. Always use a cotton bud over a brush because it will ruin your bristles. The sealant can become tacky before it dries so don't touch it while it's drying. I'm getting Jack to hold the frame up in place so I can see roughly how much of the face is going to be on show and I can see the perimeters for mapping out the shape. So on my phone I've got a picture of the magic mirror and I'm going to use this as my reference. The way my mum taught me to draw was to follow the shapes that I see. So rather than seeing a face and then trying to draw that face onto Jack, I look at each shape and then draw what I see scaling each to suit Jack's face. The next section will then link on to the section that I just drew. And then as you work through the sections, you'll start to see what you're drawing coming together. It's really important to keep taking a step back and looking at what you're doing as a whole. That way there's less chance of you going wrong too far in. So I've currently mapped out the eye shape around Jack's natural eye shape. You'll see I started with the eyelid itself. I wanted that to be the starting point. I've planned it so that when Jack closes his eyes, the actual eyelid itself will be painted black, which will mimic the eyes of the face in the mirror. So then once you've got your starting point, the rest is pretty easy to map out around it. Another element to take into consideration is that you want to be able to see the entire mask when your model or yourself are looking forward. So try not to draw the sides of the mask too far around, otherwise they won't be visible when you're looking forward. So that's one side of the face mapped out. You just need to repeat the process on the other side. I've decided to use cream based products as I want them to be really blendable. Ideally I would have chosen to use an airbrush, but I know not everybody has access to an airbrush, but you can all definitely get hold of cream based makeup. You could try and do this with paint and eyeshadow, but you definitely won't get that really beautiful seamless blend that we want. I'm using a mix of the two blue shades, one from my Makeup Forever Flash palette and the other from my Krylon Super Colour palette. I prefer the coverage of Super Colour, but the reason I've mixed them is to get the perfect shade. So I've filled in the top section and taken that down the centre of the nose. I'm now going to take a small amount of pink from my Makeup Forever Flash palette and mix that in with the blue that's on my handheld palette. And using small strokes, I'm feathering that over the blue, just on the areas that I can see purple coming through on my reference image. So I've applied this to the corners of the mask and now on the centre of the forehead where there would be kind of furrow lines. I can also see that there's a purple tone all the way down the sides of the nose. So I'm placing that either side of the blue, then that continues upwards into the front of the brow area. Going back to my flash palette, I'm taking some of the white and using another small brush, we're going to create a highlight above the eyebrows. And I'm referring to the eyebrows that we've drawn on, not Jack's eyebrows. Once I've laid down the initial colour, I'm then using a patting motion to softly feather the edges, which creates a really beautiful blend between the white and blue. So I'm continuing that line in a slight bow shape across the forehead and back up to the other eyebrow. I'm also placing that between the eyebrows, directly under the white line we've got on the centre of the forehead. I'm tapping some of that white between the purple and blue tones down each side of the nose. Off camera, I filled in the brows using this blue with a little bit of black from the flash palette. Before I move on, I'm going to start to set the face as we work down. So I'm going to be using the Tropical Wonders palette from Certify. I'm taking this blue and black called Atlantic and I think it's called Bonobo. And I'm going to use a flat shader brush and a patting motion to set all of the blue cream. To set the purple tones that sit slightly under the blue, I'm mixing Starlin and Atlantic together and I'm pressing that over the top. So do that across the forehead, the temple areas and down the nose. Then taking the white shade from the palette, I'm going to set all those highlighted areas that we created using the cream makeup. This will help to slightly intensify all the shades, but it's also going to prevent them from moving. If you just use a translucent powder, you're going to dull down all of the colours that we've put in. So it's really important to use eyeshadows that match the tones that you've been applying. 
For the eyebrows I'm going to mix a bit more of the black to the blue eyeshadow to set these in place because we've used a darker blue cream and we need a darker blue eyeshadow. Rather than pulling out 30 different palettes to match the tones, it's great if you've got one palette with a range of colours in that you can mix the shades together with. This one's perfect because it's also all matte. I'm taking this medium purple tone which is called Honey Creeper and I'm going to use that to set the sides of the nose and up into the eyebrow area. Taking the white eyeshadow and a smaller brush, I'm going to set the highlight shade that sits between the blue and purple. Taking an even smaller brush, I'm applying some white along the edge of the eyebrow. Next up, I'm mixing together some of the yellow from the Super Colour and white from the Flash Palette and I'm colouring in underneath the eyebrows. I'm going to fill in the whole space using this colour and then on another brush, I'm going to go in with some white and add some highlight to it. If, like me, you're going to go over some of the eyebrow hairs, you want to use a patting motion to really build up the colour over it so it hides the hairs. Before I add the white highlight to the eyebrow, I'm going to set it in place using some ray from the palette. But I'm only going to set the outer perimeter of this shape with the eyeshadow, as I'll be going over the centre with the white. Once again, you want to use a patting motion so you don't disturb the cream underneath. Going in with a different brush, I'm tapping some of the white cream into the centre of this area. Once I've laid the majority of that colour down, I'll use what's left on the bristles to pat around the edges and fade it into the eyeshadow that we've just placed around the outer edges. Then to make sure that's nice and seamless, I'm going back in with the yellow eyeshadow and patting that over the seams where it meets the white. I'm going in with white to fill in the shape underneath this, which is going to be part of the eyelid. This particular shape is quite small and it's supposed to have a light area through the centre, so it's easier to completely cover it in white, then fade the purple down from the top and the yellow up from the bottom. So I'm using the same purple that I've used down the sides of the nose and I'm lining the top half of that shape from the inner corner to the outer corner and making sure it meets in the middle. Then I'm wiping the excess product off of the bristles and then fading the colour down towards the middle. Then I'm tracing along the bottom line using some yellow and fading it up towards the purple. Now the foundation is down you want to go in and set it again with eyeshadow. It seems like a longer process doing it with creams and eyeshadows but it's so worth it. The payoff is so much better than you'll get with just paint alone. I'm filling in Jack's Mobile Eyelid with black face paint. If you use a cream in this area it's just going to get messy and it will shift about because of the heat from the skin. And you'll just get creases whereas with using black face paint that won't happen. You could set it with eyeshadow but I don't want it to transfer in any sense so I just use the black paint alone. Using the same purple that we used on the top half of that eyelid, I'm placing that underneath the eye. I'm going to leave the half moon shape that's underneath the eyelashes till very last. I'm now going in with the white cream on an angled liner brush and I'm going to apply a highlight to the very centre of this shape. Then once again, on a small brush, I'm going in with a purple eyeshadow to set that in place. You want to do the top and bottom of this before moving on to the white eyeshadow and setting that very centre highlight. I'm now taking this minty teal shade and I'm going to apply this to the tops of the cheekbones and feather this colour downwards. You want to line directly underneath the shape we've just coloured in purple and also take it up to that corner of the nose. I'm now taking the green from the flash palette and I'm working that on the lower half of this shape, taking it up to meet the minty teal shade that we've feathered downwards. And then just use a pattern motion when you're blending the seam between the two colours. I'm dragging that darker blue shade that we've got on the very edge of the mask and fading it into the minty teal shade and this will create a sort of shadowed appearance to this area. So to set the teal shade I'm taking Bermuda and on my flat shader brush I'm pressing that over the cream on the top half of this shape. Follow it around the eye socket and up towards the corner of the nose. Next I'm taking Fruit Dove, the lightest of the greens, with a tiny touch of the yellow to give it a bit more of a lime appearance and then I'm going to set the green. I'm now going to mix together Atlantic and Bermuda and create a bit more of a gradual fade between the purple and that minty teal shade. You don't actually want them to touch, you just want the colour to fade down so it looks as though the colours are going from purple down to yellow through the entire face. And you'll see that when Jack turns to the side we're getting that graduation of colour. Next I'm mixing together Bermuda and Dusk and I'm going to start blending over the black line that we've created around the mouth. You just want to work this backwards and forwards until it blends out the pencil and it looks like a softer transition. We're going to take the green cream and apply that over the top lip and then dip our brush into the eyeshadow called Swamp and apply this around the perimeter, concentrating the majority of that colour by the nostril. Taking our white cream, we're filling in that negative space between our cheek and our top lip. Then we're setting that in place with some of the yellow eyeshadow, but I'm making sure not to completely cover up the white. 
Going back to a tiny hint of the Bermuda colour on my brush, I'm just going to soften that line between the green and the yellow to make it look more like a shadow. I'm also softly extending that shadow from the nostril outwards. Going back to my purple cream, I'm going to reshape Jack's lips. So I'm really overdrawing his lips, making them thicker on the outer edges and making his cupid's bow really wide in the centre. Then you want to mirror the bottom lip to look exactly the same as the top. Through the very centre of the lips I'm adding black. This is going to make the mouth look open and the overall look of the lips will make him look quite sad and a bit angry. I've added a subtle highlight between the black and the purple. For the bottom half of the face I'm adding yellow to the chin and then a white centre and again we're going to set that with eyeshadow in the corresponding shades. The last couple of touches to the face itself is to add some yellow to the nose and just dip the purple in the very centre and also add yellow underneath the eyes. You could also go to the extent of colouring the eyelashes yellow so that they're not visible when the eyes are closed. To really bring the mask to life I'm now going to go in with black eyeshadow and blank out any of the visible skin. You can even paint the hair but you want to make sure you get right into the hairline, cover the ears and also take it down the neck. If you've got a frame like I have it would be a good idea to put it up to your face so you can see what is visible and then any skin that you can see you should paint black. I like to use quite a big brush to paint the majority of the skin and then go in with a smaller brush just around the little contours of the mask that we've created. That way you'll get a nice clean finish. I also made sure to paint inside the neckline of Jack's top in case it moved. And that completes my mirror mirror tutorial. This was so much fun to create and it is a fantastic Halloween costume. Jack made it so that the frame was on a handle so you can just hold it in front of your face. You could however attach it to a band around your head and that way you wouldn't even have to hold anything. Thank you all for watching, have the most brilliant Halloween and if you do follow along with any of my tutorials please tag me in them because I love to see your recreations of my looks. Please hit subscribe if you haven't already done so, if you've missed my previous Halloween tutorials the playlist is on screen for you, as are my social handles if you would like to follow me outside of YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon, bye!